So you want to really become rocket scientists, huh? Um, let me talk about the just different types of rockets. Um, uh, this is a solid fuel rocket engine. Um, and these are just really simple, robust engine rockets. These are like fireworks uh, that you buy are probably propelled upward with little rockets like this. Um, there's an engine casing. Uh, in the rocket that I'll pass around and that we'll use in our demonstration, this is just paper. Uh, the fuel is something that, that will burn with enough energy to eject stuff uh, fuel this way, right? Because that's how rockets work, is you shoot the fuel that way and the rocket gets pushed up, right? Uh, but it can't explode. It can't be like, you know, gunpowder will just make it go boom, right? Um, the heat-resistant material here is just clay for the little Estes rockets. Um, and then that nozzle is a particular size, right? Um, this has the igniter there, but, you know, we, we light our little Estes rockets right about there. Um, and the nice thing about solid fuel rockets is they're very, very dependable and simple. Um, and you can carry one in your backpack, and if you need to kill a tank, you just uh, pull it out and off it goes, right? Um, here is a, a picture of the, uh, our space shuttle, our reusable spacecraft, right? Uh, these are the biggest, you know, what solid fuel rockets I know about. Those things are solid fuel rockets, these guys right there. They help it get off, you know, up into space. Um, looks like it was designed by a committee, right? This thing here is actually, a, a, you know, goes up like that, right? That's the uh, liquid uh, fuel tank for, for the, the shuttle because it can't hold enough fuel uh, for the whole thing. And um, the sad thing about our reusable shuttle is that it, one launch, according to NASA, costs $450 million, right? The Russians launched their Soyuz for about $112 million, right? We're not exactly sure, but that's about what it is. The actual cost of our shuttle might actually be, some people pin it at about 1.5 billion, okay? So it's somewhere in between there, right? Uh, if we had just stuck to disposable rockets, we could have saved so much money. I mean, basically, the space shuttle prevented us from doing a lot of really other cool things we could have done with that money. But anyway, I won't go on that rant uh, too far, right? Um, this is a basic idea, right, is that the, the, the thrust of this engine okay, is the mass burn rate times the exhaust velocity. So the basic idea of rocket design is to make this big and make this small. Because you want to burn your fuel slowly with a maximum delta V for the, the exhaust to get the biggest force, right? Well, a lot of exhaust velocity means that you have a lot of pressure in here, right? That's what you have to have, right? And so that's pushing out this thing eventually if you get too much pressure, it's going to explode. So a well-designed rocket is just shy of exploding, right? Um, and certainly if you get this fuel mixture wrong, why it does explode. Don't ask me about that. Okay. Um, here's a force curve. I just wanted to show you this uh, for this little solid fuel rocket. It's the Estes Rocket Company prints this up and sells it with the, their rockets, right? Notice that, that they're talking about impulse, right? And notice that it's in newton seconds, yeah? Okay? And then we've got, you know, thrust in newtons and everything like that. And that's a D12 engine, right? 12 means, by the way, it's 12 newtons, right, of, of thrust roughly on the average. And a, a C6 is on the average. Uh, that's these guys, about 6 newtons of thrust. Um, but a D12 engine, they make bigger ones, but that's the biggest one you can buy and still be kind of an idiot like me. Uh, so, you know, the story goes, my first year of teaching, I think, I think it's been seven years since this, you know, statute of limitations has expired. I, I decided I'd really show my kids a thing or two. So I strapped a D12 engine onto a little dynamics cart, right? And um, I could have done this calculation, right? Uh, 20 Newton seconds, right? Those carts had a mass of about 0.5 kilograms, okay? They were really lightweight and because, uh, you know, well, you want it to go fast, right? Well, that's going to equal the mass times the change in velocity, right? That's the impulse. That's force times time all wrapped together, right? That's the mass times the delta V. Well, if that's 20, you can figure out the delta V. That's going to be about 40 meters per second, right? Which is about 90 miles per hour, okay? I really showed those private school kids a thing or two, right? This rocket filled the air first with a, a, a roaring sound, an acrid smoke, um, this thing flew through the air, apparently reaching 90 miles per hour or something short of that, right? About two-thirds of the way down the hall, thankfully, when it had passed all of my, you know, children in my care, uh, it left the ground. We, we're not exactly sure, but it burned the ground right there. So we think that's when it, like, decided to become an airplane. 
it flew into the wall, hit the wall about like shoulder level. Um, and this was a cinder block wall and it was a, an aluminum uh, track cart, right? And it, it uh, hit the wall with a resounding boom and uh, knocked a hole in this wall, a tiny little hole as a cinder block, you know. It, the story became much better than that, right? Um, anyway, they didn't fire me for that. Look out, baby. And then the other one, this is the Varsity rocket. Okay, this is, um, a, you know, an Encarta diagram, right? But basically, you've got a fuel tank. This is something like in the uh, Saturn V rocket, it was kerosene, and the oxidizer was uh, oxygen, right? We almost always use liquid oxygen for that. Uh, on the space shuttle, this thing is hydrogen, right? We use hydrogen for that, and then this is oxygen. These pumps know stoichiometry, so they know exactly the right volume to pump into the combustion chamber. And then I like the explanation on Encarta. They had this great explanation. It's like, okay, let's draw that combustion chamber, right? There it is, right? Shh. It's like got this stuff like that, right? The explosion basically pushes in all directions, as explosions and gases do. But the force that way is canceled by the force this way, right? But the force upward, there's nothing to push off of, right? This stuff is just getting pushed down, right? So, so that force is unbalanced, and so there's a net upward force on the rocket. Um, I don't know, I like that explanation, right? Um, this is a picture of a, you know, uh, I think they're launching the Voyager um, spacecraft in this picture. Uh, so that's a little while ago, right? Um, there's two questions that I would have about one of these rockets. Um, the first one is, why do you keep it, how do you keep it from tipping? You'd think something 313 feet tall being pushed upward by the bottom would tend to tip over. Um, so how do you keep it from tipping? And the answer is, by the way, not that it's got fins like your model rocket has and it's going to fly like an arrow through the air. Um, it's much more complicated than that. Uh, and then the second question I would ask you guys is, uh, how come there's steam coming off? When you see these guys on the launch pad, there's steam coming off, right? Why is that, right? Um, and in fact, uh, they insulate these tanks. What's in those tanks that, that makes it steam like that? So those are two questions. We can, we can answer those when you get to class. Uh, you could you could uh, YouTube them or something like that. You could Wikipedia them.